Hello, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from Allery Chemistry and welcome to this video on hydrocarbons and halogen compounds. So this is topic 30 and 31 combined, lucky people. Um, and this is for the CIE specification. So this is the, the Cambridge Internationals. So if you are studying this specification uh, or this syllabus, then um, this is the perfect place for you. Um, there is the full range of CIE um, videos for year one and year two chemistry on Allery Chemistry YouTube channel. All I ask is you hit the subscribe button, please, just to show your support for this project. That'll be absolutely amazing. Um, also, these slides, these are just PowerPoint slides, and they are available to purchase from a test shop. If you click on the link in the description box below, you'll be able to have a look at them there. Um, but they're really good for um, kind of supplementing your revision notes. You can print them out and write notes on them, etc. Put them in your file, etc. So loads of, um, obviously loads of notes are available on, um, on there. So just click on the link in the description box and you'll be able to get a hold of them there. Right, so let's make a start and let's look at this. Now, you'll find that a lot of the CIE topics kind of overlap um, from the year one chemistry and they obviously feed through, as you would probably appreciate. Um, and obviously this topic is hydrocarbons and it kind of links with the hydrocarbons topic for the same name topic for year one. So I'd encourage you to look at that one first before you actually go into this one um, here. I would imagine you've probably already done that because obviously this is for year two. Um, and like I say, I've kind of merged together the hydrocarbons and halogen compounds topic together because the halogen compounds is quite a small topic and it kind of works quite well together. So it kind of covers both. Right. OK, so let's make a start. Let's look at what um, start with the hydrocarbons part first, I suppose, and then look at some halogen reactions associated with that. So we're going to look at arenes. OK, now we've seen a little bit of arenes in the introduction to A level chemistry, A level organic chemistry in the previous topic. So this is where we're just going to kind of go into these in a little bit more detail, each kind of different subtopic of organic chemistry. So arenes, these are basically aromatic compounds. Now these contain a benzene ring, okay? And we'll look at a few of these. There's a lot of benzene rings you're going to see in this uh, in this um, uh, video. Um, they're also known as arenes, um, and you get you need to know reactions of two types of arene. Um, it sounds like a person, doesn't it? A person's name, Irene. Um, there's benzene there, which is this kind of um, hexagon um, of six carbons with a delocalized ring of electrons that you may have seen in the previous topic of introduction to A-level chemistry, A-level organic chemistry. And you've got methyl benzene here, which is basically just a benzene with a methyl group attached to it. And there's a couple of reactions that you're going to see later on in this video that involve both of these. So when we're talking about irenes or benzene, this is what it is. So let's kind of have a look and see what benzene is first. Now, benzene, as you've probably just established there, is a cyclic planar molecule with the formula C6H6. Now, it has four, um, the carbon or the carbon atoms that make up benzene have four valent electrons. So that's the number of electrons in the outer shell. Each carbon is bonded to two other carbons and one hydrogen atom. Okay, so this is the structure of it here. And the lone pair in this kind of p orbital here. So remember, these are your sp2 hybrids. So there, there, and there. And then you've got this kind of p orbital that hasn't been hybridized. Um, now, this has a lone pair of electron that's kind of whizzing around in this p orbital. And it sticks above and below the, the actual planar profile of the benzene ring. Now, what happens is these electrons then kind of overlap, or these orbitals, sorry, overlap, and they form this delocalized ring structure. And we get these p orbitals, as you can see here, the p orbitals overlap, and you form this delocalized structure. Now, this delocalization gives benzene very unique properties, as you're going to kind of see later on. So this delocalized electron structure, effectively from a bond length point of view, all the carbon-carbon bonds in this molecule are actually the same, okay? Um, and they actually have the same bond length of 139 picometers. So that's the length of the bond. So there's no longer or shorter bonds here, even though we've kind of got a bit of a double bond arrangement going on because they're kind of delocalized and spread across. It actually tries to uniform or create a uniform structure. 
So the CC bond length in benzene lies somewhere between 154 picometers, which is a single bond, and 134 picometers, which is a double bond. So normally, you can probably see here, you might form a double bond between these orbitals here, these orbitals, and these orbitals. Now, normally that would happen, um, but like I said, they kind of, because they kind of spread the electrons across all of these orbitals here, then you do kind of get a bit of a strange situation where you get a delocalized electron system. So, um, benzene is normally drawn in a skeletal formula, which you will have heard of before. Um, now, normally, like I say, the structure, um, this structure here shows benzene with double bonds. And this is called, just a little bit of history, this bit here. This is called Kekulé's structure. And this was named after the fellow who basically came up with um, this, this structure. And he was called August Kekulé, who discovered it. I think it's August rather than August. I'm pretty sure. So anyway, um, that's what he's called. So, and he thought actually benzene had these alter alternating single and double bonds, which kind of makes sense when you look at the orbital diagram that you've seen before. You may see it drawn like this sometimes, um, just in books or in notes, etc. It is the same thing. However, in reality, um, we do know that the benzene does have a delocalized structure and that's why we normally kind of symbolize the delocalization of electrons as just a ring so basically a circle that's in amongst this hexagon so basically that is derived from these double bonds kind of alternating around this ring and imagine if it goes really really quickly you kind of get this circle here okay so i'm going to be using this one um, from now on because this is what the exam board will will use um, but just just in case you might see this it, it is the same um, it's it's not a different chemical basically um, so remember though when we're looking at the skeletal formula there is a hydrogen attached to each one of these carbons obviously we don't show the hydrogens in a skeletal formula we just show ch 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 ch, CH. okay and obviously the other electrons are being used within this um this delocalized system so just to make you aware because when we do some um mechanism drawing or drawing mechanisms in the reactions you need to be aware that there is a hydrogen there that we haven't just kind of invented it i suppose Okay, so we're going to look at some of the reactions of arenes and a lot of this topic is going to be looking at loads of different reactions and what you make and why you make it and looking at stability and things like this. So there's a lot of this throughout the whole topic. So when arenes react, they actually undergo electrophilic substitution reactions. Okay, so benzene has a high electron density. It's got this delocalized ring structure in the middle and this is attractive to electrophiles remember electrophiles are electron loving species so themselves will have a delta positive or full positive charge attached to them now this is a bit weird the, re the reason why it's weird is because you've basically got effectively a bit like a double bond haven't you kind of just a delocalized in the in the benzene ring um now that double bond um, would normally mean that you have addition reactions, isn't it? So normally when you have a double bond, you add chemicals to it, etc. Because benzene has this unique delocalized system, it doesn't actually undergo addition reactions. It's it's substitution reactions that we're looking at here. So that's what makes it a little bit strange. Okay, um, so benzene is really stable molecule. It doesn't. It's it's hard to actually break into the benzene ring. So, like I say, it doesn't go, it doesn't undergo traditional electrophilic addition reactions like you would do with an alkene, um, because this will actually disrupt that benzene ring, that structure. So, like I said, instead they undergo electrophilic substitution um, reactions where either a hydrogen on the benzene ring, remember you've got the hydrogens bottom of the carbon, or functional group that's actually already on the benzene ring is substituted for the electrophile. So there's five main reactions. There's, there's a few other peripheral ones here, but there's five main reactions that we need to know here. So first one is friedel crafts acylation. Second one is friedel crafts alkylation. The third one is halogenation reactions. And we'll do a little bit of a comparison with um, aliphatic, i.e. Chain, um, chain halogens as well. Um, nitration reactions as well, and hydrogenation reaction. So, so there's quite a few reactions here. So you can see how kind of important this is. Okay, so let's start with the first one. And this is um, 
obviously this is to do with hydrogenation first. This is probably the easiest one to start with. So benzene can react with hydrogen to form cyclohexane. Okay, so here's your benzene molecule here, um, and you can see it there. And we can add hydrogen to this benzene here, and we can form cyclohexane, which is basically we're adding extra hydrogens or additional hydrogens to the carbon, um, to the carbons here. So we use platinum and a nickel catalyst to do this, and as a result, we produce cyclohexane pretty straightforward okay now you need a lot of energy actually to do this um, an incredible amount of energy because benzene as we said is quite stable so to add hydrogen to it um, is going to be quite tricky to do but nonetheless this is the reaction you need to be aware of okay dead straightforward gets a bit more difficult than this <laughs> not as if you wanted to hear that mind um, so electrophilic substitution so as we've seen before, um, benzene, like I say, undergoes electrophilic. That's not substation. <laughs> that should say substitution. Um, I will get that changed. Um, I hope that's an interesting one, isn't it? Electrophilic substations. I wonder what they look like. Um, so um, electrophilic substitution reactions, and you need to know specific reaction conditions. I will get that changed and updated. So um, here we've got a benzene ring. Okay, and we've got E plus, and that's your electrophile. Remember, electrophiles have that positive charge or the amount of a delta positive charge. So what happens from a mechanism point of view is the electrons that are in that delocalized system, these are attracted to the carbocation. Now, normally in this case, to have a reaction with benzene, you really do need something quite powerful something that's quite strong and impactful so when we're talking about electrophiles we really need electrophiles with a proper positive charge on it delta positives aren't quite as powerful and it's just not enough generally not enough to break the benzene ring this delocalized electron so the electrophiles you'll see later on are actually have a po proper positive charge so really deficient in electrons um, and what happens is the lone pair, uh, sorry, the um, electrons from the delocalized system will start to move towards the E plus, okay, because obviously there's an attractive force there, okay, and this breaks the ring, okay, breaks the ring structure, and you can see here that the ring structure has actually been broken. The electrophile adds on to the carbon. Remember, there was a hydrogen on that carbon anyway. Um, but unfortunately, this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds already, so it can't, it doesn't have a spare set of electrons to delocalize in here. So when you're drawing your kind of intermediate stage, then you've got to make sure that the lines here, the delocalized, the kind of broken delocalized structure, doesn't go beyond the adjacent carbons that this carbon is bonded to. So you can see here it's cut off at that carbon and it is cut off at that carbon. If we're drawing it further across, that's incorrect okay so just make sure the positioning of this delocalization, delocalization is really important you have this positive charge obviously in the middle as well okay so then what happens obviously we can't have this either this is not very good so the electrons from the ch bond then break away into the positive charge okay and we reform the delocalized system which is a lot more stable so it's happier now and um, crucially we've added our electrophile to the um to the benzene ring and the hydrogen that was attached to it is now being kicked off okay so benzene rings like i say they're really stable molecules reactions are difficult we need very strong electrophile to react um and normally um, we can use, and you'll see this called halogen carriers. These are catalysts which can help generate these um, um, electro, these kind of electrophilic, these positive electrophiles, should I say. So we're going to see how halogen carriers work later. Um, however, typically halogen carriers um, are aluminium halides, they're iron and iron halides, for example. So um, a key um, one that you're going to see later on is AlCl3, so aluminium chloride, aluminium trichloride. Um, this is a halogen carrier, okay, and it's this that can help generate this electrophile with a positive charge. Okay, so looking at halogen carriers, let's look at our kind of first or second reaction to this here. So obviously the first one was just the addition of hydrogen to form cyclohexane. Um, so in this one, we're going to look at adding a halogen to a benzene ring. Okay, so we're going to look at the halogenation of benzene. 
So halogen carriers, they can be used to help add a halogen, so chlorine or bromine, onto a benzene ring. And this is where we start, okay? Now, normally chlorine doesn't have any polarity at all, okay? But um, the polarity can be um, induced by coming close to the benzene ring or indeed in a halogen carrier. And so therefore we can get a delta positive and delta negative um, polarity that's actually formed on the chlorine. Here is your halogen um, carrier. So the halogen carrier is polarizing the chlorine in this case. So the electrons have been moved from one to one side of the molecule, leaving the other side a little bit exposed. Now what happens, this would never be able to react with this. It's just there's nowhere near enough um, positive charge on here for the electrons to jump out of here. It's not interested. So this is basically going to create a really reactive species, an electrophile. Okay, so we've got this delta positive okay and then what happens is this because of the existence of the halogen carrier okay then this bond can break and form alcl4 okay alcl4 which is on here um, and this allows this reaction to actually occur and allows it to happen we add the chlorine onto the benzene ring and you can see here that we've drawn our delocalized system no further than the adjacent carbons of the attacked carbon, which is the one in the middle here. The chlorine has been added on, and we have this hydrogen, which is here. So what happens is the electrons, as we've seen before, jump from the carbon-hydrogen bond into the positive charge. Remember, the curly arrows show the movement of electrons. So electrons are moving from the bond here into this positive charge to try and stabilize it. And then we form our ALCL, oh, sorry, we form our um, halo alkane. Uh, no, we don't. We form our, our um, uh, chlorobenzene, so our halo benzene molecule here. So you've got chlorobenzene here. You've got ALCL3, which is here, which has allowed this reaction to kind of um, um, work. Um, and then we've got um, HCl that's actually formed as well from the remaining halogen. And that's come from the remaining chlorine molecule. Um, and the hydrogen has obviously come from the benzene that's actually been substituted. So you can see here that within um, this reaction, there we are, okay. So if we react chlorine or bromine using UV light instead of a catalyst, then we can get multiple substitutions on this benzene ring. So here we're using a halogen catalyst. You could use UV light to create a radical, which is um, obviously reactive enough to react with the, with the benzene ring here. Um, one of the things you should notice as well, and this is what the example would want you to know, is actually this halogen here, this has formed a very stable, um, you know, very stable um, structure here. And actually the electrons within this bond here will kind of be incorporated with the whole benzene ring. So it tries to form this stable structure. Now, as a result, um, reactions involving um, to, um, halo benzene molecules here are actually less stable than their um, than say a traditional halo alkane, so just a, an alkane molecule, so say an aliphatic chain. So for example, you might have chloroethane is obviously quite reactive because you have that permanent dipole that exists. Now that bond between the carbon and the chlorine in say chloroethane um, is, is weaker. And so therefore the reactions with them types of molecules are much more, um, much more reactive. With chlorobenzene, they're not as reactive um, because actually some of the electrons in here are actually incorporated within this kind of stabilized benzene ring structure. So this means that actually the bond strength between the carbon and the chlorine is stronger. Um, and so what that means is that um, reactions involving chlorobenzene are not as reactive as their kind of um, straight chain um halo alkanes or halogenoalkane counterparts so just a kind of point of note really that's going to be quite important okay so let's look at the halogenation of methyl benzene instead so halogens substitute the hydrogens in the ch3 group when in the presence of uv light and a bit of heat so remember we had two different types you had benzene and methyl benzene so methyl benzene has already got a methyl group attached to the carbon so when we react that with chlorine, actually what happens is it will um, react with the methyl group instead of the actual benzene, um, the actual benzene ring itself, and we form 
um, a trichloral methyl group, which is the one on the top here, and obviously the other chlorine, um, or the hydrogens react with the other chlorines to form HCl. And actually, if there's enough of the halogen here, then all of the hydrogens will be substituted. So if we've got an excess amount of chlorine. So here, actually, the, the chlorine reacts with the methyl group rather than interfering with the benzene ring. Remember, this is really stable, and the reactions will, will obviously, in this case, there's no halogen carrier to create your kind of dipole. So it will just purely just attack the methyl group on here. Okay, so really important that the reactions will depend on what actually your starting material is. Okay, so let's look at some other um, reactions. So the position of the functional group on a benzene ring, or the position of functional group, sorry, should I say, on a benzene ring can affect the reactivity with electrophiles. Okay, so where, depending on where they're situated. So obviously benzene has carbons um, that have the same um, electron density, so the reactivity is identical for each reaction. Okay. So substituted benzene rings, they distort the electron density in the ring. And so this affects the reactivity of carbon atoms in the ring. Okay, so remember, we've got this kind of sea of electrons that's kind of spread across there. Okay, so let's have a look at some electron withdrawing groups. So electron withdrawing, withdrawing groups, these affect substitution reactions on carbons 3 and 5. Okay. So your electron withdrawing groups are normally electronegative groups. So this could be nitrates, for example, so NO2. It could be NH3. It could be um, carboxyl um, groups. So these are like carboxylic acid, for example. What these do is these withdraw electron density from the ring. So the electrons are kind of delocalized in the ring, but they're kind of distorted up here and then back down. Okay, so they try and pull some of these electrons um, away. And so what this does is this impacts... Um, the um, the substitution reactions in carbon three, which is obviously we number from this obviously from the the functional groups so we've got one, uh, so we've got one, two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six going around there. So um, so this is drawn specifically from the electrons are drawn from carbons two, four, and six at the front there. Okay, so this means when we have a situation where we've got an electron drawing group, withdrawing group like this, this means that electrophiles are more likely to attack carbons three and five, and substitution is more likely to happen at these points rather than at any other point on the benzene. So you need to look out for that when we're looking at reactions where we have one of these groups already attached. You're more likely to get substitution at three and five, say for example, with electron withdrawing groups. Now, if we've got electron donating groups instead, so these actually affect substitution reactions on the other carbons that we haven't looked at. So that's two, four, and six. So electron donating groups are, um, say, NH2, um, OH, and CH3. So these donate electrons into or help to push some of their electrons into this benzene ring here. So we actually increase the density of electrons that's now floating around here. Um, and the kind of the big impact that has is it specifically pushes electrons into carbon two, four, and six. And so this means that if you have an electron donating group, say on a benzene ring, so one of these, for example, then you're more likely to get electrophilic um, um, substitution occurring at carbons two, four, and six. So these, are, this is where this is more likely to happen. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. Just make sure you're aware of that. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. So we're going to predict the reaction between phenol and chloroethane. Okay, so we've got chloroethane here. Okay, and we're going to use the halogen catalyst again to, to, to help catalyze this reaction to help get it going. So here, um, OH is an electron donating group. So it's pushing electrons um, into this here. So we're more likely to get substitution at carbons 2, 4 and 6. Okay, so we're adding this, obviously, this um, halo, halo alkane um, or halogeno alkane with the acid, the halogen carrier. Um, and this means we can get a substitution at point two. And the reason why we know it's two is because we've got this electron donating group. So if we look at another example, we're going to predict the reaction between nitrobenzene and chloroethane. So we're going to use the same um, um, the, the same um, 
uh, reactant, which is your halogenoalkane. So you can see here, because the NO2 is an electron withdrawing group, so it's going to pull electrons away, you're more likely to get reactions or substitutions, should I say, at carbons 3 and 5. So it's the same reagent, but this is going to add on to 3. So whatever is already attached to it, in this case, um, just make sure you're aware if it's an electron withdrawing, or an electron donating group and then think right well where am i likely to get this substitution either one of these would be fine there's no preference um it just has to be either carbon three or five okay so let's look at obviously we've looked at some kind of um molecules already and one of the molecules that you've seen was a nitro benzene now one of the reactions you do need to know as we kind of stated before is the nitration of benzene so nitrate and benzene is useful because it allows us to make dyes for clothing and explosives as well, which is, um, you know, which is obviously useful in terms of demolition of big buildings and things like this. So um, if the way in which we do it is if we heat benzene with concentrated nitric acid and sulfuric acid, then we actually form nitro benzene. But um, like we've seen before, we have to make a powerful electrophile first. Okay, it's no good just having... Um, a, a kind of weak um, polarity, so like a delta positive, delta negative, um, you've got to actually create something that's quite powerful. Um, so the first step, this this happens in two steps here. So the first step is we make the electrophile first. And what we do is we effectively react the nitric acid with the sulfuric acid first. We put this into a beaker, and what actually happens is the HNO3 accepts a proton, Okay, which you can see here. So effectively, the nitric acid is acting as a base here. So remember that from um, when we looked at acids and bases. So this is accepting a proton to form H2NO3+, and the sulfuric acid is acting as an acid um, because it's donating a proton, and that forms HSO4. Then what happens is this H2NO3+, this decomposes to form the electrophile, nitronium ion which is NO2 plus so you actually form this here and it's this that you need to react or attack the the benzene ring so you have to make this first now this heats up quite strongly if you do it in the lab it heats up quite strongly you've got to um, obviously mix this and handle it with care because they are concentrated they're very strong acids that we're making here so then we use that nitronium ion that we've made. So we've got that in solution and we react it with the benzene. We can now introduce it to the benzene ring to make nitro benzene. So here's the reaction. There's your NO2 plus. Okay, that's your electrophile. And guess what's going to happen here? Yes, you're going to get your electrons moving from that um, um, this delocalized system here. Okay, and it's going to go and attack the NO2 plus here. Okay, so you've got this delta negative, uh, sorry, you've got this electron density here. That's going to go for the positive electrophile. The NO2 is then going to add itself onto that carbon. The hydrogen is still exists on there. The positive charge in the benzene ring, and remember the delocalized ring structure doesn't extend beyond the adjacent carbons to the one that's been attacked. So there's your intermediate. Then what happens? is the electrons from the CH bond, they move back into the benzene ring, that reforms that delocalized system, um, and then here presto, we form nitro benzene. We produce the H plus ion as well, and the H plus ion reacts with the HSO4 minus, remember that we produced from sulfuric acid in the first step, and that reforms H2SO4. So that's evidence of sulfuric acid in this reaction behaving as a catalyst. Because remember, catalysts are never used up. They're always reformed in the reaction. So obviously, this is an example of a homogeneous reaction. Okay, so remember the homogeneous, you have an intermediate step, which is obviously the production of the NO2+, plus, and then it reacts with the benzene and is reformed later. So really important if it's asking about um, providing evidence for, um, for the... Um, sulfuric acid being a catalyst so this temperature um really must be below 55 degrees to ensure you get single no2 substitution so if you're doing this in the lab for example you would never use benzene because benzene is carcinogenic um but you might use a derivative of benzene probably a carboxylic acid so say um, um and, and a um, 
like a an acidic version of it and um, with the carboxylic acids attached to it um so yeah but this has got to be done below 55 degrees and this will ensure that you actually get single nitration if you do this um and you mix it obviously it heats up quite a lot it's a very exothermic reaction so you should sit this in an ice bath and add it slowly so you're not overheating it but if you do add too much to it then it will um um, it will result in multiple substitutions so you get substitutions right across the benzene ring so if you just want a single substitution keep it below 55 degrees celsius okay right so um methyl benzene as we've seen before this can obviously react with dilute nitric acid um so methyl benzene reacts with dilute nitric acid it produces nitro compounds um, as methyl benzene um, is more reactive than benzene so we don't need the same powerful concentrated nitric and sulfuric acid mix as we did with benzene this group here and whenever benzene's got a um a methyl group attached to it okay so something like this it weakens this um, the remaining ring structure so it makes it a bit easier for other groups to kind of attach themselves onto this compound here so um so that's obviously a, a key obviously that's a key point there um and so for that reason we don't need um the the same strength acid it just has to be dilute instead okay so um and you can see here that um we can effectively add a nitration um we can have a nitration reaction the no2 um adds onto the benzene ring now we've got to be really careful with this okay so remember your ch3 is an electron donating group okay so it occurs at um, carbon 2 and carbon 4 okay so this is where it will, this is where it will occur um, and you get two isomers that are produced one methyl 2 nitro benzene and one methyl 4 nitro benzene now the reason why I say you've got to be careful with this is um, this the kind of common name for this is toluene okay with the methyl group so ignore the NO2 it's called toluene now if you substitute this three times if you just allow it multiple substitution i.e. heat it up you form trinitro toluene which is um which is not great okay so um it's obviously tnt so it's an explosive but we'll kind of come back into that in a moment for this case you just need to know about the nitration of um methyl uh, of methyl benzene here Okay, so let's have a look at some other reactions, and these are friedel crafts reactions. Um, so benzene is used widely in pharmaceuticals and dye stuffs. However, because as we've regularly seen all the way through here, benzene is really stable, it's actually difficult to react. So friedel crafts reactions can help kind of solve this problem here. So these two chaps here, um, James Friedel and James Crafts, so um, they were um, French and American chemists, uh, they came up with a reaction where acyl group, so the RCO or the alkyl group, which is just R, so let's take an alkane for example, um, is added to a benzene molecule. Um, now after the acyl or the alkyl group is added, the benzene structure is weaker and this makes it easier to then modify it and make whatever you want. So they kind of came up with a reaction to kind of add a functional group onto the benzene ring um, and then that makes further reactions a little bit easier. So quite an important process here. So in order, as we've seen before, to add onto the benzene ring, the electrophile must have a very strong positive charge. That's really important. Um, acyl groups, um, they have a positive charge. However, it's not positive enough. Okay, it's really got to be quite powerful here. So like I say, we can use a halogen carrier to act as a catalyst. So the ALCL3, as we've seen before, this makes a stronger electrophile with a much stronger positive charge and this allows obviously the reaction to to proceed so in Friedel-Crafts acylation or alkylation um, we have to react an acyl chloride which you'll see later on in year two um, or a halogenoalkane okay with the halogen carrier and that creates that strongly positive electrophile and what we're going to do here is we're then going to look at some mechanisms and see how this halogen carrier can be used to um, create the um, the two different products so the first thing to make the powerful electrophile 
with any of these reactions and we're going to use AlCl3 as the halogen carrier and we're going to look at the kind of initial reaction first. So AlCl3, there it is there. There it is. Okay, so AlCl3. Um, it's got a, so AlCl3 accepts a lone pair of electrons away from the acyl group. So there we are. That's AlCl3. Sorry, there it is. I can't see where my mouse is. So AlCl3. Um, and then you've got your aldehyde, which is here. Okay, uh, sorry, your acid chloride, which is here. So this is with the carbonyl group and the chlorine. Now, acid chlorides are pretty reactive chemicals in their own right. And so therefore, they have a delta positive carbon and a delta negative um, chlorine. Now, what happens is the halogen carrier, like I say, it accepts the chlorine from here. Okay, you form AlCl4 minus, which is here. Um, and then you form this intermediate, this carbocation is formed. And it's this that's powerful enough to break into that benzene ring. There we are. So your stronger electrophile is produced and we can react that with benzene. So let's kind of take this then, this kind of intermediate here, and see how that then reacts with benzene. Okay, so we made the electrophile react with benzene. Um, we're going to make a less stable phenyl ketone under reflux, and we're going to use a dry ether solvent. So here we've got the um, the um, carbocation, as you can see here. You'll probably guess what's next. That's it. The electrons move um, from the delocalized electrons in towards that positive carbocation there. Um, and then what happens is this then joins itself onto that carbon. You can see it's a familiar pattern here. You've got your CH bond here. Um, then you've got your delocalized electron with your positive charge, remembering to keep them, um, you know, not extend them beyond the adjacent carbons. Then you've got this halogen carrier that's then floating around here. Okay, so you've got the four chlorines, as you can see there, with the Al minus. So what happens is actually the, the bond breaks from here, from the halogen carrier, and because it wants to get rid of this these bonds here, and it starts to bond with the hydrogen that's attached to the CH here. Okay, so effectively, um, it's trying to pick this proton off. And then what happens is the electrons then move from this bond into that positive charge. So it's like a domino effect. It starts kind of, you know, um, breaking this apart. You're then left with AlCl3 again, so you've reformed the catalyst, and that's how we know the halogen carrier is a catalyst, and then we form HCl as well, okay? So really important that you understand we've got to make this carbocation first, and we use the halogen carrier to do that, as you can see there, um, and then it then gets involved, the intermediate here gets involved to take the proton and it's reformed. Again, the halogen carrier is acting as a um, um, as a homogeneous catalyst. So you form this intermediate and then the halogen is reformed later on. Okay, so let's have a look at the other type. So that was acylation because we used an acid chloride or an acyl chloride as they're also known as, and you will see them later on in year two. Um, the other type of Friedel-Crafts reaction is alkylation. They didn't just stop at acylation. They thought, no, we're going to take over the world and we're going to look at another reaction as well. So, again, to make the powerful electrophile that we need, we need to use the halogen carrier again, just as we've seen for the acylation reaction, and we need to look at the mechanism for that as well. So this time, um, we're going to use um, your... There's your halogen carrier, AlCl3, and we've got an... Um, a halogenoalkane. So we need to use a halogenoalkane for this reaction. This is going to provide us with the alkyl group that we wish to add onto our benzene ring. Now this by default has a delta positive and delta negative charge, okay, but this is not good enough as we just discussed before. This is not good enough to actually react with the benzene ring. So the AlCl3 accepts the pair of electrons away from the halogenoalkane. So that's going to break and then the electrons are going to then move onto that aluminium there. So effectively, that's going to form an intermediate, which is AlCl4-, minus, and that will kind of come into its own later on. Uh, and then we've got our carbocation that's formed, and this is what is needed to break into that benzene ring. So we've got the stronger electrophile. So again, we're going to look and see how that can be used with a reaction with benzene. 
So we've got the electrophile, we bring in benzene, and we're going to make a less stable product, which is alkyl benzene. And we're going to do all this under reflux and a dry ether solvent, as we mentioned before. Now, you'll probably see a lot of similarities here with this one. So you've got your benzene ring, you've got your alkyl carbocation, which is over here. Delocalized electrons, they move to go and attack this carbocation. You form this intermediate, as you've seen here. And then this intermediate, you've got your ALCL4- minus that comes back into play, which is over here. Um, again, the electrons move from there onto the hydrogen. And then they move in to stabilize that um, positive charge in the benzene ring. And you form your alkyl um, benzene molecule so this this time it'll be it could be for example methyl benzene um, ethyl benzene whatever it is whatever whatever the r group is here again alcl3 is a catalyst it's reformed again and we form hcl as well so these reactions follow a very similar pattern but with friedel crafts reactions you've got to create using a halogen carrier you've got to create the carbocation first because delta positives like polar molecules are not powerful enough to break this um this delocalized electron ring structure okay so just looking at the final reaction that you need to be aware of and this is an oxidation of side chains so side chains like ch3 um, so these can be oxidized readily when they're attached to a benzene ring so here we've got here we've got your methyl group um this is your methyl benzene also known as toluene, methyl benzene, which is here. Um, and we can add alkaline potassium manganate solution um, and dilute sulfuric acid. So this is, remember, this is an oxidizing agent. You might have seen this um, when you're oxidizing primary alcohols to um, aldehydes and carboxylic acids, or you can use this to oxidize um uh, you, well, you, you can use dichromate as well, but um, you can use this to oxidize um, uh, secondary alcohols to ketones as well. So so this is an oxidizing agent. Um, so basically, it could be used to oxidize um, certain reagents. Dilute sulfuric acid, and effectively what we've done is we've oxidized the methyl group okay, to a carboxylic acid. Okay, so this is called benzoic acid, this one here. So this is formed by basically oxidizing, using a powerful oxidizing agent like potassium manganate um, to create this in the first place. So just as long as you're aware that we can oxidize side chains using these reagents here as well. Okay, and that's it. So that's everything you need to know for um, hydrocarbons and halogen compounds that's mixed together. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Like I say, the full range of CIE um, topics um, all the way from 1 to 37. Um, so it's year 1 and year 2 on Allery Chemistry YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button to show your support for this project. That'll be absolutely fantastic. Um, also, these are available to purchase. I'll get all the kind of little... the. Um, the, uh, the kind of mistake that was made on the on the slide there, I'll get that kind of amended as well. But they're all available on the TES um, and they are um, available to purchase. They're great value for money and you can use them as part of your notes. Put them in your file, print them off, add your notes on and put them in your file so they're great value for money. So go and have a look at them there. Right, that's it. See you later. Bye-bye.